Hi, my name is Ryan Prohaska. I'm a program manager with the StoreCorps. Uh, I've been asked to spend a few minutes here uh, talking about uh, hand planes, their care and use. So why choose hand planes? Uh, why choose hand tools? Well, uh, there's a lot of good reasons. Uh, one is when we're doing work that has a, a finish to it that we want to match with the traditional, uh, the only way to get it is with hand tools. It's the fastest way to get it. Uh, a lot of times with historic core, we're actually working in backcountry settings and uh, power, finding power with or, uh, modern tools can be very difficult. So we can easily grab one of these tools, pull it out, and have it operate. Uh, but for me and, and for many of us, it's about preserving traditional craft skills and making sure we're keeping that knowledge alive. Uh, as the construction industry changes, uh, we're seeing a lot of these tools uh, end up in, in, uh, in, in antique stores and not, uh, not being used anymore. So uh, there's a lot of really good reasons that we reach for these, uh, for the convenience and, and off the grid and uh, uh, fine tuning things. See, even if you have been using a handsaw or a, I mean a power saw or a, uh, sanders, you can always pull one of these out quickly and do a little bit of tweaking at the end. So here's a variety of different hand planes we have here. Uh, we have, again, the wood body and metal bodied ones. Um, with the more traditional wooden ones, uh, you had a variety of smoothing and jointing and, uh, and what, what we would later call jack planes. Uh, we also have some specialty planes here, a scrub plane and uh, uh, some provides a rabbit, a rabbit plane. Over here we have some metal planes. Uh, we have everything from a little tiny a block plane to a number four plane to a number seven jointer plane. So a number four uh, is a good size for smoothing surfaces. Number seven is a great size for jointing surfaces. That is to make a edge of a board nice and straight and flat. Uh, a block plane is a great tool for finished carpentry. It's great for uh, cutting the end grain or doing little fine detail work. Over here we've got a couple molding planes with different profiles on the bottom, uh, hollows and rounds they're called. Uh, they come in a wide variety of size. Originally, traditionally, uh, every piece of molding with any kind of shape would have made, been made with a variety of different sizes of hollows and rounds. Uh, we've got some, uh, um, a router plane, we've got a rabbit plane, uh, we've got a couple different uh, spoke shapes and a, a cabinet scraper. And an important tool with a hand plane is a screwdriver to uh, adjust the screws on the, on the bodies there. Okay, uh, in terms of safety, what should we be uh, concerned about here? What type of personal protective equipment should we, we, we be uh, wearing? Uh, really, uh, the dangerous part is this sharp edge right there. It's trapped in this plane body, and as long as we keep our hands on the tool, we shouldn't have a problem uh, with getting cut. Um, as we're setting tools down like this with that sharp edge down, um, usually I'll set it on its side like that, or if it's got a lot of chips on the board and, and no uh, metal or anything like that, I'm fine resting it just like that. So here again is a number four hand plane, a fairly very common one. Um, we've got uh, a cast iron body here, we've got a knob and a handle. The front of the tool is called the toe, and the back is called the heel, like a foot. Uh, and so here we've got a little lever, and this takes this uh, lever cap off, which reveals a couple parts here. This is a chip breaker up here, and this is the, actually the uh, plane of the iron right there. We're going to take our uh, screwdriver, and we're going to open that up. Why does this need two parts? Uh, because what happens is as the plane rides over the material uh, and starts cutting into the wood uh, like this, uh, the chip breaker as the edge comes up rides uh, uh, the chip and breaks it off, a chip breaker. Uh, that helps the iron of the, uh, of the plane work more efficiently. So there we have the frog. We've got the nut that holds it, or the screw that holds everything down. We have a couple of adjustment screws back here. We have a lever back here. And uh, let's, let's get this back together and show how that works. So uh, if you can tell, as you look down the plane, um, as you lever, move this lever back and forth, it pitches the plane left and right. 
That way, if you need to adjust the plane, uh, you've got that adjustment there. Okay, so now that we've got the tool back together, we want to get it uh, adjusted so that we can actually take some material off. So right now, the plane iron is not sticking past the, the bottom of the plane. Uh, if I couldn't feel it with my finger, I know that just by sliding along the board, it's not touching something. So how do we adjust that? Uh, a lot of that's going to happen with this knob back here. Uh, and if you turn it, and keep turning it, it's going to be fairly loose and you're going to feel it get a little bit stiff. That's when it's actually starting to put uh, pressure on this little piece right here. And that's driving the plane iron up and down. So when I turn it this way, it's going to continue uh, pushing the plane iron down. Uh, what I like to do, just to make sure I'm, I'm getting in the right spot, is uh, make sure the plane iron isn't touching and keep winding it down until I start to feel it uh, actually grab onto the wood. And I'm starting to take up some shavings, so I know that I've got it pretty close. And these, with, especially with the, the smoothing plane, are very small, thin, fine shavings. As I'm cleaning, I'm seeing that's not quite enough. Uh, I'd like to take off a little more, so I just give it about an eighth of a turn down. Uh, when I'm using the tool, I'm not going to push it straight in line with the board. I'm going to just have it off just a little bit. So not in line, but just off. Uh, that gives it gives the plane iron a little more uh, uh, edge right on the beginning of the screen. We're going to jump over to the uh, jointer plane again and talk more about that and what we're looking for when we're uh, setting it up. So again, we've got our uh, chip raker and our iron. Uh, that goes carefully into our tool, making sure it uh, gets indexed into our, our little uh, slot right there. And again, we can see our lever adjusts the blade left and right so that we can get it nice and uh, lined up. Drop our, our cap in there. There may be some need to adjust this. Again, get a nice screwdriver that fits the screw properly and adjust the tightness. Uh, sometimes that can take a little work to figure it out. Once you've figured it out, leave it where it's at. Um, let's see if this is actually writing on the board yet. Uh, we're not taking up any chips. I don't feel any resistance between the blade and the wood, so I'm going to adjust it. Again, taking our knob back here and just giving it slight turns. Uh, if there's a lot, of, a lot of movement that the blade has to take, then go ahead and release the chip, uh, the cap, and uh, give it a couple turns so you get a little more distance. Now I see it really grabs on, so I'm going to back it up. As it backs up, we're actually going to have a little, it's going to be a little bit loose. Once you turn it until you feel a little tension, that's when the plane iron is actually moving up and down. Okay, again, I can see that there's no chips coming out. I'm not feeling any resistance. I'm going to turn the knob uh, again in the direction to lower the blade. And I can see it's just picking up a little bit of material. That's actually uh, pretty good, but it's still a little bit of more resistance than I want. So I'm going to back it up a hair, tighten it back down, and check again. Again, that's a, a bit more than I want to take off. I'm going to back it off a little bit more. Try again. Once you get a, a tool like this set up, it's really there's very few reasons to uh, to to take it out of that adjustment. Okay, now we're getting nice thin uh, wafer thin uh, tiny paper thin pieces and. Uh, uh, very, it's cutting the wood, but not with much resistance. So again, the point of this tool, this joiner here, is probably not going to see it in many of our trailers, but uh, it's a good tool for straightening an edge uh, and is showing all the principles of the hand planes that are uh, going to be the same with them all these tools here. Um, as I'm using the tool, what I'm doing is um, I'm going to start from the very edge of the board, especially with this joiner, and I'm going to pull it towards me. And 
So let's start taking some material off. Right along. Especially with the joiner, if I get a full uh, shaving all the way across the board, the full width of the board, I know that I've uh, got a nice flat surface. Uh, I'm not using my arms, I'm using my body weight to move this, this uh, tool. So I'm getting the kind of started, and then I'm standing, and I'm almost falling towards the tool, letting my weight uh, push it forward. Well, thank you for joining us today. Uh, again, my name is Ryan Prohaska with Historicor. Uh, we'd really like you to uh, consider donating, if possible, uh, and helping out in some way. It's, it's because of donors like you and, and people that provide uh, support like you uh, that we can continue providing uh, opportunities for you to go out and work in backcountry settings. We continue preserving historic structures across the entire nation and uh, being an important part of preserving our nation's history. So please consider uh, donating or supporting us today, as well as uh, following all our social media platforms, and uh, hope to see you on the next project. Thanks.